Hey, Barry Shoulder here with Gourd Banjos by Barry. We're down in the shop uh, on this Saturday afternoon and I'm just uh, kind of fooling around here. I'm finishing up what I call my fence post banjo. I think I'm going to turn this light out because that's a little better. That's a whole lot better actually. This is a fence post banjo. And I've made a ton of these things and they're so popular because the only thing that is smooth on them is the back of the neck and the top of the neck. Everything else is rough. In fact, this one has a nail in it if you kind of take a close look at that. It's got a nail on there. The peg head, and the reason I, I call it a, a, a fence post is because the original one had a slice of fence post for a peg head cover. Now I'm using, um, I, don't, I think this is still a piece of uh, fence post. Had some white flaky paint on it, so uh, I used it, sliced it. The gourd is completely unfinished. It has no finish on it. This is how it actually came out of the uh, gourd fields. I'll show you this real close. This is how it came out of the gourd field. It's really very cool. So it's got somewhat of a wax, waxy sort of finish to it. But anyway, got a sound hole there. I just put strings on it. Let me let me turn this down so you can see what's going on here. Is that good? No. That's a little better. Anyway, I've got, uh, let's get this down just a little bit. I've got, um, like I say, the strings just set up on there and all the action is set. I use a feeler gauge, uh, actually several feeler gauges when I'm setting up the string action uh, at the nut. What I do, let's see, this is, uh, turn this on. And we'll go to inches. This is 55,000. So what I do is I slip this underneath right at the neck, file the nut down till it hits the uh, feeler gauge, and I've got 55 thousandths action at the nut. Then I come along and get the, uh, the uh, bridge set up down here. I've got a mark on the head. So when you receive the banjo, there's a little mark here to set your, your uh, bridge. And oh, one thing I, I, I do and I tell people in the instructions is on the tailpiece, the tailpiece slides on a dowel and sometimes the connection between the gourd and the canteen just a little loose, which is okay because the, both can swell and if it swells too much, it'll crack the gourd. But I put, uh, there's a little O-ring, if you can see that, in between the tailpiece and the gourd. And what I do is I give it a little tap and that kind of nudges it in and eliminates any kind of slop in between the neck and the gourd. So now we're going to, let's see, we need to put a, a strap pin in here. So we'll get a, a quarter inch drill bit and drill us a hole in here just like that. And these pins that I use, they're uh, violin pins. And they have a taper on them so I use a violin reamer that is actually tapered approximately the same amount as the end pin here not quite so let's go a little bit further on that that's just right. I don't want it tight again because oh, I'm coming right back. 
I don't want her tight because I can uh, crack the gourd. So I'm taking a little bit of cement here. This happens to be Duco house cement, home cement, household cement, whatever you want to call it. And slip it right in there, tap it. That's good. Now, let's, uh, let's tune up this rascal and uh, see what comes of it. Let's see here, we got, uh, so we need to come up here. Oh, I'll tell you something that's kind of interesting. Uh, maybe not. When I put the pegs in, the pegs are put in on a taper. The hole is tapered using this same reamer that uh, I used for the, uh, the peg here on the side. The pegs are tapered, the reamer's tapered, so they're matched, the angles are matched, but I use, this looks like a lipstick, but it's actually a compound, it says W.E. Hill composition for pegs which have caused, have ceased to run smoothly. I put these on, I put this on the uh, peg, rub it in where it meets the wood, that way it gives a real nice smooth fit. They still hold good. Uh, let's see how far off we are here. They slip a little, you just push them. There's nothing uh, mysterious about friction tuners. Tune that one. Let's see here what we got. Let's go over here to chromatic and see what we got here. This is my uh, custom set of strings that I sell on the internet. Almost there. There we go. high up on the peg so I'm not getting the angle so I'm going to lower that just a little bit strings to get uh whoa. anyway you get the idea 
we don't need to go on with that. That's just uh, uninteresting. So anyway, um, this is the fence post. This is, uh, let me see what number is this one, because I will put it up on my website here shortly. I think it's, uh, let's see, 340. This is number 340, 10-inch 10 inch canteen board, I think. Let's see, I have a notebook here. Yeah, 10 inch canteen gourd. There we go. Four and a half deep. Got a, got a nice sound hole in the side here, about an inch and a half, which is plenty. The neck is finished in oil, just in the playing area. The gourd is completely natural. Uh, the, the fingerboard is uh, maple and the neck is cherry and this is a nice got a little string end here uh, hitting so we get that out of the way going on here in the uh, banjo shop today and uh, we'll see you next time